Long-lived assets. Long-lived assets are defined as those assets which are expected to provide future economic benefits extending more than one year. These assets may be tangible, intangible or financial. The major questions we will address in this reading are as follows. What value should be shown on the balance sheet when we acquire the asset? And then what value should be shown on the balance sheet during the life of the asset? We will also be concerned about how the cost should be allocated over the life of the asset. Let's first talk about the acquisition of long-lived assets. Upon acquisition, long-term tangible assets such as property, plant and equipment are recorded on the balance sheet at cost, which is typically the same as fair value. The asset's cost might include expenditures in addition to purchase price. And the question is whether these costs should be expensed or capitalized. On the next slide, we'll talk about which costs should be capitalized and which costs should be expensed. With intangible assets, the valuation depends on how the intangible asset is acquired and we will discuss this later on. Property, plant and equipment. At acquisition, property, plant and equipment is recorded at cost. Cost includes all expenditures necessary to get the asset ready for intended use. It is important to understand this because there is a good chance that you might get a question related to what cost must be expensed versus what cost needs to be capitalized. Say you purchase a machine for 1000. Clearly, this cost needs to be capitalized and shown on the balance sheet. In addition to 1000, you pay 100 to install the machine and get it ready for intended use. That obviously will also be capitalized. Say you also pay 50 to get the factory ready for this machine. As an example, the floor needs to be reinforced in order to support this heavy equipment and that costs 50. This 50 is also going to be capitalized. If you do a routine maintenance or you have your factory painted, then those expenses are expensed. That means they flow through the income statement. They are not shown on the balance sheet. If you train your staff to use this machine, that also needs to be shown as a expense which flows through the income statement. If there are any subsequent costs related to the equipment that you purchased and set up, those costs are capitalized if they are expected to provide benefit beyond one year. So if you make a major upgrade to the equipment and that upgrade is expected to provide a benefit for three years, then that upgrade cost can be capitalized. Otherwise, if you incur a cost where the expected benefit is less than one year, then that cost has to be expensed. As you might have gathered, there will be some expenses or some costs where there is subjectivity as to whether the cost should be expensed or capitalized and different companies might make different expensing versus capitalizing decisions. You as an analyst need to realize that the choice of whether to expense or capitalize has an impact on financial statements and hence on ratios. Let us now look at an example which deals with what expenses are capitalized versus which expenses are expensed. Acme Inc. purchased a machine for 10,000. In addition, the following costs were incurred, 200 for delivery, 300 for installation, 100 to train the staff, 1,000 to reinforce the floor to support the machine, and 500 to have the factory painted which expenses will be capitalized and which will be expensed. Clearly this expense of 10,000 is going to be capitalized. 
200 for delivery this is necessary to get the machine into a working form so this needs to be capitalized the installation cost also needs to be capitalized 100 to train staff to use the machine just remember the fact that the training cost is not capitalized this needs to be expensed the way you can think of this is training of staff is a routine activity that companies should be doing plus if the staff is trained and then they leave then obviously that doesn't provide a long-term benefit to the company so in general training cost is expensed a thousand to reinforce the flow to support the machine this needs to be capitalized because this cost has to be incurred for the machine to operate and this cost while not explicitly stated here is likely to provide a benefit over a period longer than one year 500 to have the factory painted this clearly is going to be expensed so you simply add up these numbers 10,000 plus 500 plus 1000 and that will give you the amount that needs to be capitalized 100 plus 500 is what needs to be expensed how will the treatment of these expenditures affect the company's financial statements we need to look at the balance sheet here the income statement and the cash flow statement on the balance sheet the property plant and equipment will go up by 11500 which is simply the sum of all the capitalized expenses and obviously, if you are paying using cash, then cash goes down by the same amount. On the income statement, we will show the expenses, 100 to train the staff, and then 500 to have the factory painted. So these go to the income statement. We will also show a depreciation expense over the life of the asset on the income statement. As far as the cash flow statement is concerned, this cost of 11,500 is going to be shown as part of CFI whereas the expenses that are expensed 100 and 500 these are going to be shown as part of cash flow from operations capitalizing of interest costs for constructed assets interest costs during construction are capitalized as part of the asset cost the idea is straightforward let's say that you are constructing a building and the construction period is two years to create this building let's say you borrowed some money and you are paying interest on that money the interest cost can be thought of as just another cost the way material is a cost labor is a cost the same way interest is a cost and since material and labor are being capitalized it makes sense to also capitalize the interest cost associated with creating this building but the interest cost will be capitalized during the construction period the question then becomes what interest rate to use the answer is use the rate on borrowing related to construction so if your construction costs 100 million and you have borrowed 100 million specifically for this construction at a rate of 10%, then you use the 10% rate. So your capitalized amount will be based on 10%. If no construction debt is outstanding, the interest rate is based on existing unrelated debt. It is also possible that a company has issued a bond and raised 200 million through that issue. The 200 million that is raised is used to pay for the building plus it is used to pay for other expenditures. Given that in this example we don't have a borrowing that is specific to construction, we can then use the rate that is relevant for this bond issue. Let's say that rate is 12%. We can then use the 12% number to calculate the capitalized interest. The capitalized interest is not reported as an expense on the income statement and that's obvious since we are capitalizing that means that the amount is going on the balance sheet even though we are making interest payments 
and that's important you are borrowing money and let's say you are borrowing money from a bank you need to make payments to the bank but the, the interest expense is not shown on the income statement initially it, it is shown as a asset but then as the asset is depreciated then essentially the interest expense is shown as a depreciation expense over the life of the asset just as a subtle distinction between IFRS and US GAAP IFRS says that the interest on short term lending offsets capital costs this is not allowed under US GAAP this will become clear in the example that we will look at shortly but just to give you a quick sense let's say that you borrow 100 million at 10 percent and that means that over the two year period you are going to make payments of 10 million and 10 million so your capitalized interest according to US GAAP is going to be 20 million what IFRS says is that when you get this 100 million you are obviously going to invest it in a in a operating bank account and when you invest this money or place this money in the bank you are going to get some interest let's say that the interest amount that you get is equal to 1 million then the 1 million offsets the 20 million that we are capitalizing so the capitalized interest then becomes 20 million minus 1 million which is 19 million that is according to IFRS US GAAP says that the entire 20 million needs to be capitalized let us look at a few conceptual issues related to capitalized interest capitalized interest causes higher net income and greater interest coverage ratios during the period of capitalization notice that when we capitalize interest then it is not showing up on the income statement as we've discussed up here the interest expense is capitalized so it causes the asset value to go up which means that the expenses on the income statement are relatively low which means that the net income is relatively high for the firm that is capitalizing interest the interest coverage ratio is going to be high the interest coverage ratio is essentially EBIT over the interest expense if we are showing a relatively low interest expense then EBIT over interest expense is going to be high notice that the lower or higher interest expense does not impact EBIT because EBIT is earnings before interest and taxes so therefore our interest coverage ratio is going to be high during the period of capitalization but then what happens in subsequent periods higher asset values and depreciation lead to lower net income and lower EBIT and interest coverage again this should be fairly clear in the year that we capitalize or in the years of capitalization let's say that back to our original example it takes two years to construct a building so in these years we are capitalizing interest expenses because of that capitalization our value of the asset the building in this case is relatively high because that value includes the capitalized interest this means that in subsequent years the depreciation amount is going to be high which means that our expense is going to be relatively high because this will include the depreciation of the capitalized interest since the expense is relatively high the net income is going to be relatively low EBIT is going to be low because depreciation is considered a operating expense if you look at your basic income statement you subtract depreciation in order to come up with EBIT so if depreciation is relatively high that would mean that EBIT is relatively low and your interest coverage ratio which is EBIT divided by the interest expense is also going to be relatively low because after construction you are going to actually show your interest expense as an expense on the income statement and your EBIT is also lower because of the extra 
depreciation. Therefore, the overall interest coverage ratio is lower. Given what we just talked about, I want you to do this example. Here is what you should get. 2 million at 5% over a two-year period means that the interest that is being paid over the two-year construction period is 200,000. This needs to be capitalized according to US GAAP. So US GAAP says that the entire 200,000 is capitalized. What IFRS says is the following. You are paying this much interest based on your borrowing, but when you borrow money, you put the money in a operating account and you get interest worth 20,000. This 20,000 needs to be netted out from the 200,000 and that gives you 180,000. So according to IFRS, 180,000 is what is going to be capitalized. Where will the capitalized borrowing cost appear on the company's financial statements? Initially, the capitalized amount is going to appear on the balance sheet. And then after the construction is complete, then we will have this entire capitalized amount as part of the asset value. Once the asset is depreciated, then the capitalized interest is also expensed out through the depreciation process via the income statement over the life of the asset.